All right, today we are going to talk about the principles and the ideas that are the foundation of our government. You may want to check out socialstudiesgames.us. That's where you can find all the PowerPoints, all the lessons, and a bunch of review games that can help you become a better social studies student. Today we are focusing on the beginning of Unit 2, the principles or the ideas and the significant documents where they wrote those ideas down that are the foundation and the formation of the U.S. government. And the U.S. government is basically our country or nation. So let's start the timer and roll. List the parts of the Constitution. List means I can write down that's the part, that part, and that part. And then try to describe what each part does. So you've written down the three parts. And then you say, well, that part does this. And this part kind of talks about this. And then this part kind of talks about this. Those are your learning goals from for this video. The U.S. Constitution is a document course in 1787 it gets approved and in this document the u.s constitution explains our government and we've held with it and this is an example for every nation around the world they also have fallen in line and created constitutions this is ours it still exists today and everything we do all of our government's rules and powers follow and come from this document so i want you to be able to list the three parts of this document and then kind of describe what happens in each part the first part is called the preamble, pre, like pre-season, B4. This is the beginning. Before we get into the big parts of the Constitution that go into all the details, you have the preamble. And in the preamble, a short beginning intro to the Constitution, it explains the purpose and the goals of our government. So listing the three parts, you would list one as preamble, and what is it? What happens in that preamble? Well, it gives us the reason we have a government and what our government's supposed to do every day. Like basically, when our government wakes up in the morning, it looks at the preamble and says, all right, that's what I'm supposed to do today. This tells the government the specific things it's supposed to do every single day, the basic job of our government and why we have a government. It's like, well, well why do we have it? Oh, because I'm supposed to do these basic things. The second part of our constitution, where there are three parts, you should be able to list all three, are the articles. This is the body. This is the main important part of the Constitution. This is where all the details are written. It tells you about the structure of the government. It talks about all the three branches, the legislative branch and everything it does, the executive branch and everything that it can do, the judicial branch and everything it can do. It talks about how do you change the Constitution or how do you amend the Constitution. It tells us the specific powers of the government. So all the details. So part one is the preamble. So if you're listing, preamble, and this is real quickly explains the basic idea of the government. Step two goes into the details of saying, well, this is exactly how the government does the preamble. Here are all the details. Here's all the blueprints. Here's all the structure, the rules, the organization of how the government can do this. So again, the preamble is what we wanted to do. The articles basically show how the government can do this. It goes into all the details and the specifics. It explains each branch of government and all the powers of those branches of government. And then it also tells us how we can change this document. And then finally, the third and final part of the three parts of the Constitution you should be able to list and describe are the amendments. And amend basically is a fancy word for change. And the amendments are the changes that we have made to the original Constitution. The original Constitution was just this, just two parts. But then we realized we need to add some stuff. We forgot some stuff. We need to protect some basic rights to get people to accept our government. Our government's job is to protect basic rights. And so the first 10 amendments or the first 10 changes are called the Bill of Rights and their specific purpose, they were left out of the original constitution then added on their specific purpose was to tell the government specifically the rights of the citizens that must be protected by the government. So again, the government wakes up every day. It's basic idea of what it needs to do. It's written in the preamble. The articles tell it specifically how it can go about doing those things. And then also, these are the things that we left out. So, oh yeah, but by the way, you also need to protect my freedom of religion, assembly, press, petition, speech, my right to bear arms, my right to not have soldiers in my house, my right to privacy, my right to due process, my right to eminent domain. You can't just take my land. If you're going to take my land, you have to have a good reason and you need to compensate me for it. Uh, the right to that I don't have to incriminate my Myself. I don't have to tell on myself. You can't make me. So there's a bunch of different rules, uh, jury rules and trial rules and no torturing rules. And look, we can't write everything down. Okay. So I'm not going to go completely into it. How much time we got? Oh, we got plenty of time. We are smoking. 
All right, let's look specifically at the preamble. So again, here are the three parts. Let's dive into the three parts of the U.S. Constitution. This isn't like, oh, we're studying something from 200 years ago. This exists today. This is still the document that the government has to live and abide by. Just because it looks like some old, tattered, torn up document doesn't mean that the words in it are not significant. They absolutely are. Our government, every president, every congressperson, every United States citizen still has to follow these words today. So let's start with the preamble. There's the actual Constitution written. Let's blow it up. Let's pull out the preamble. So if we look at it, we the people of the United States. So let's just write it in an easier way to, to understand. So let's go into the details of the preamble. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, this is what we the people want. So that's a big key word right there, guys. This is not we the rich or we the government or we the elites or we the king. No, the very beginning of our constitution starts we the people, referring to the people, meaning this is a country of the people, by the people, for the people. The people write the rules, not the king, not the aristocracy, not the rich, not the elite, not a specific group. This is a country for the first time in the face of the earth for the most part. Now, there were slightly some democracies before, but in the modern world, this is the first time, no, the people run the government. And this is what the people want. The preamble, remember, this is the purpose of the government, why we have a government. This is us telling the government what they should do every day. And this is we, the people, telling the government, this is what we want you to do. We are creating a government to do these things. We, the people, want to establish justice. We want domestic tranquility. I'll go into this in a second. What are these words? We want common defense. We want to promote the general welfare. We want to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. So we do ordain and establish the Constitution of the United States of America. We want these things, and so we're going to put it in this Constitution forever and ever. Amen. What does this stuff mean? Well, let's translate it, and we've got plenty of time. Awesome. Thanks for joining me here today, guys. Let's go into this. So, again, the preamble is the intro to our Constitution, and it states the purpose of of the government and why we created the government. We the people want the government to do these following things every single day, 365, 24 seven. This is why we created the government and this is what we expect. The government wakes up in the morning, puts its shoes on and says, I gotta form a more perfect union, establish justice, domestic tranquility, common defense and promote the general welfare and blessings of liberty. And it goes to work and it does that. It's what the president does. It's what our Congress does. It's what our Senate does. That's what our judges do. It's what our mayors do. That's what our city council does. That's what our governors do. That's what our delegates do. That's what our state senators do. That's what every bureaucratic person in our government does. So let's talk exactly about what those things mean. So when it says, we the people, if we were to translate or decode this old timey language, it's saying that the definition, this is the consent of the governed. Consent is a fancy word for permission. And the governed, governed, who's getting governed? We are. We are allowing the government to rule over us. We are allowing the government to make rules that affect our lives. We are giving the government power. We are giving them the power to make rules and laws and to run the show. So they have our permission as long as they do these things. You know, because it's, it's scary. You go, know, oh gosh, you're going to create a government? What if they abuse you? What if they make unfair laws? What if they get into wars you don't want to get in? What if they unfairly tax you? What if they make the rich really wealthy and they make rules that help out specific groups? So yeah, it's scary to create a government. So what we're doing is we are going to create a government, but we're going to put a couple restrictions in place so that even if there is a government, they still have to follow these rules. And so we're going to allow a government to exist, although it's kind of scary and it could turn into a monarchy. It could turn into a dictator and it could be abusive. But we're going to take the risk of creating this government because we need a government to do these things. Only a government can do these following things. I can't do them. You can't do them. It's very hard for us to do them working together. Private businesses can't do them. The only agency or organization that's capable of performing these tasks equally and fairly is a government. So we have to take this risk of creating a government and giving our power to an organization so that we can get this done. So the first thing we ask, and we never really ask this very much more, is to form a more perfect union. Now here's a picture for uh, consent of the governed. So we the people are giving power to the government and asking them to do, uh, to do these following things. 
four more perfect union. Uh, we had an original constitution. It wasn't called the constitution. It was called the Articles of Confederation. Our original government, the first document that describes our original document, government, is called the Articles of Confederation. And it was a failure. It was a disaster. I'm not going to go into much of the detail. But the first thing that we, the people, want, that we request of the government is take that old government, get rid of it, take it out back and chop its head off. We don't want it anymore. We want you to get rid of the Articles of Confederation and create a new government and do the following things. Establish justice. This is common sense, right? So now we've gotten rid of the Articles of Confederation. God, get out of there! Articles of Confederation. What? Now. Think to yourself, what do you want the government to do? What? So you're giving power to the government, which is you know, you're, you're giving away your own personal power to a government to make decisions. Why? What do you need the government to do each day? The first thing is establish justice. And that's a fancy way of saying, look, the government can make laws, but they should be fair laws. And we need to have fair laws that make our society safe and equal and give opportunities to everyone. We also need fair courts. If someone tries to kill someone or someone is accused of something, we shouldn't just throw them in jail. We shouldn't just execute them. There should be courts that make these decisions. And those courts have to be run by somebody. And so it should be the government. And those courts have to follow laws that have to be created by someone. And so those laws have to be created by the government. Someone has to write the rules about what you can and can't do in this country. We've got to have rules. Someone has to make those rules. And so we say, we the people want the government to make rules that say, you can't speed. You can't sell drugs. Uh, you can't kill people. You can't steal from people. What you can and can't do has to be written down and defined. And so we're saying, look, government, we trust that you know what to do. And we trust that you can set up courts and juries to make sure that people are found guilty or not guilty if they've been accused of these certain things. You need a government to establish justice. Domestic tranquility. Domestic is a fancy word for home and tranquility is a fancy word for peace, like a tranquilizer. If you've been tranquilized, you're calm and you're peaceful. So that's tranquility. And domestic, like dome or domicile means your home. So we want peace in the USA. So we're creating a government to create peace. The easiest way for them to do this is create police officers to keep safety in the street, to protect our homes, to protect our neighborhoods, to protect our local environment. So we, we create a government to create peace in the street. Common defense, defense, you know what that is, and common means all of ours. And so we create a government to protect us from outside enemies. If another country tries to invade or attack us, we give the government the power. We want you to create an army. We want you to be able to defend us every single day. They wanted that in 1787. We want that in 2019. And we have a military that is protecting us every day. Promote the general welfare. So just make our lives better. We are giving the government the right and the power to do things that help us live better lives. That could be build schools. We say uh, that could be build roads. That could be build railroads. That could also be, hey, how about you give health care to the elderly? Or we give the government to make rules that give health care to low-income families or give uh, situational nutritional assistant programs to families in need. We say, government, we give you the power and we trust that we want you to do things that are going to make our lives better. That could be education. That could be assistance. If I lose my job, you help me out. That could just be to create a society where I had the opportunity to make a bunch of money. Just government promote the general welfare. Welfare just means well-being, the good. Promote the general good. Basically, government, do what you got to do to make America good. Give us all the chance to live a good life. So make laws, create government organizations, create laws and procedures that can make life better for us. The biggest example is education, if they want to do that. And then last, the blessings of liberty. This is simply saying just protect our rights. Liberty is a fancy word for rights, or sometimes you can interpret liberty as free of government restrictions, meaning don't restrict our rights. Create an America where our rights are free. No one's taking things away from me. Protect our rights. Every day, the government, one of the biggest jobs of the government, and the reason that we've created this very strong, powerful organization is to protect my freedom of religion, assembly, press, petition, speech, my right to own weapons, my right to privacy, my right to due process, protect my basic rights. Because who else can do that? Who else has the power? I don't have enough power to protect my specific rights, but the government has enough power to specifically, specifically protect those rights. We do not have enough time to jump into Article 1. That's we the people. 
Next video, we'll dive into Article 1. So quick review. Three parts of the Constitution are 35 seconds. Let's see if I can fly back up here. There they are. So I want you to list the parts. The preamble, the articles, and the amendments. We talked about the preamble today, which was the purposes and the goals of the government. The reason we create a government and what we want the government to do every day, we just talked about that, the preamble. And really, if you were going to memorize one part of the Constitution, I would say memorize the preamble because it gives you a very good basic idea of why we have a U.S. Constitution. In the next video, we will talk about the articles, which gets into the nitty gritty, the details and the basics. And then eventually we'll talk about the additional changes and the things that we have had to add over the next 200 years. The timer is about to hit right now.